I'm going to give you my honest opinion before diving in. Although it was meant to be an unfiltered, unedited dialogue, it seems like the question had been pre-arranged and pre-rehearsed and very controlled by Kremlin. Having said that, the interview was quite fascinating and considering most of the great points Putin talked about will never be mentioned by the Western media. So it's very important that no biases are taken during this summary. I'm using multiple journalists and their breakdown of interviews as everyone will view and deduce their own version of the truth. Let's start off with the most awkward moment of the interview. Putin ordering an aide to hand Tucker a copy of 17th century letters written to prove to Carlson that he was not inventing things. And Putin told him to translate the document in his own time. That kind of terrified and threw Carlson off in the beginning. Although it was highly anticipated, no one really expected anything groundbreaking to emerge from Tucker Carlson interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Carlson seemed scared with his softball interview approach, failing to extract any stirring insights into Russian President's actual war aims or to hold him accountable for his brutal invasion of Ukraine. Instead, Putin took full advantage of the opportunity to plant seeds of doubt about America's aid for Ukraine and the US political system. Basically, he shot on US for two hours and wasn't pressed nor challenged on his own political stances. There were some interesting unheard political historic timelines, such as Bill Clinton misleading Putin over Russia's potential membership of NATO two decades ago. Putin said, I asked him, Bill, do you think if Russia joined NATO, do you think this will happen? Bill suddenly said, you know, it's interesting, and I think so. But later on, when they met in the evening for the dinner, he said, I talked about this with my team and it's not possible now. So there was intention for Russia to actually join NATO, according to Putin's story. Putin, as serious as he looks and seems, he seems to have some sort of sense of humor. He mocked Carlton for trying and failing to join the CIA, saying, thank God they didn't let you in. He then went on to accuse NATO member states of trying to intimidate people with what he called an imaginary Russian threat. And throughout the interview accused the CIA of supporting Russian separatist groups, controlling US foreign policy and destroying the Nord Stream pipeline. Putin also talked about the potential World War III kind of situation and that he has no interest in attacking other nations such as Poland or Latvia saying he would only do so if the other countries were to attack Russia first. He also made it clear that it goes against common sense to get involved in some kind of global war, and global war will bring all humanity to brink of destruction. The ramifications are obvious, he said. And then Putin took shots at US foreign policy for using dollar as its main weapon to preserve its power across the world. To use dollar as the tool of foreign policy struggle is one of the biggest strategic mistakes made by the US political leadership. As soon as political leadership decided to use US dollar as tool of political struggle, a blow was dealt to the American power. This is a stupid thing to do and a grave mistake, Putin said. The Russian ruble and Chinese yen have largely replaced the US dollar in countries' trade activities and suggested that the America's economic transactions are hurting their own economy. So let's dive deeper into some of the major talking points within this historic interview. Putin insists that the war is not over, but it can be ended in just a few weeks. The main message that Putin sought to convey to the Americans was that there was no point using taxpayers' money in helping Ukraine with more financial aids and weapons. And Carlson, who himself previously questions US support for Ukraine as it seeks to defend its people and its land in face of Russia's assault, was all too happy to deliver that message. If you really want to stop fighting, you need to stop supplying weapons and it will be over within a few weeks. That's it, Putin claims. Adding that it was up to US to tell Ukraine to come to the negotiating table. But that's not really the full story, as Putin himself made clear in two telling responses to Carlson's follow-up questions. First, whether asked Russia had achieved its war aim, Putin said, no, we haven't achieved our aims yet, because one of them is denazification. The claim that Russia is seeking to denazify Ukraine is widely seen as a code for removal of countries 
democratically elected President Vladimir Zelensky. In strong indication of what he meant by his comments, Putin said, we have to get rid of those people who claimed without bias support Nazism. Second question was when Carlson asked whether Putin would be satisfied with the territory that you have now. Putin refused to respond, returning to his point about denazification and insisting he hadn't yet finished answering the previous question. In other words, he meant no. The second major point was that Putin says that the American democracy is just an illusion. In granting Carlson an interview, Putin gained unfettered access to large American audience ahead of the US presidential election later this year. It's no secret who Carlson would back in likely Donald Trump versus Joe Biden rerun, but it was Putin, not Carlson, who brought up Donald Trump, saying he had enjoyed a personal relationship with former US president as well as with George W. Bush. Putin also ran through the ways in which past US presidents in his decades in power has seen four of them come and go and failed to reach consensus with Russia on security matters. The point he was making, the US political system is, to borrow a phrase, an undrained swamp and America's democracy is just an illusion. In simple words, he alluded that America is ran by CIA and other agency, not the president. It's not about the personality of the leader, it is about the elite mindset, Putin added. The third major takeaway from this interview was that Kremlin came well prepared for the interview. Anyone who can dent Putin's armor is kept light years away from the president, whether they are the wives of Russian soldiers, independent journalists or anti-war election challenger Boris. Anticipate in the criticism that the interview would do little more than to facilitate Kremlin propaganda, both Carlton and Putin took great pains to head off an impression that they were in cahoots. But any moments of tensions were brief and ultimate insignificant, with Putin almost coming on top on all of them. At one point, Putin even said, are we having a talk show or conversation? and then went on delivering a 20 plus minute historic soliloquy. Carlson basically failed to fact check or divert Russian president's fanciful history lesson, instead warned viewers in an opening statement that when answering his question on why Russia invaded Ukraine, Putin went on for a very long time, probably half an hour about the history of Russia going back to the 8th century. This almost seemed like a filibustering technique deflecting the agenda fully. But Carlton believed Putin was sincere and praised the president's encyclopedic knowledge. Meanwhile, Carlton avoided any topics that could have been sensitive for the Kremlin. Reports of Russian war crimes in places like Bucha and Mariupol, the International Criminal Court arrest warrant for Putin, Alexei Navalny and other political prisoners, and Russia's mobilization of wartime death toll. He even stayed clear of any questions about the upcoming Russian presidential election and this week's disqualification of the anti-war candidate Boris. There was also mention of Elon Musk in the interview. Tesla and ex-boss Elon Musk had a divided loyalty when it came to Russia's war on Ukraine, initially assisting Kiev before appearing to succumb to Kremlin propaganda. In the interview, Putin took the opportunity to stroke the billionaire's ego. There are reports that Elon Musk had already had a chip implanted in human brain in US, Putin told Carlson. Putin also said there is no stopping Elon Musk. He will do what he sees fit. Nevertheless, you'll need to find some common ground with him. Search for ways to persuade him. I think he's a smart person. I truly believe he is. One open question ahead of the interview was whether Carlson would ask about Evan Gerskovich, the American Wall Street Journal reporter who had been held in pretrial detention in Russia for almost a year on what are broadly seen as a trumped up espionage charges. Carlson raised the possibility of a prisoner exchange involving Gerskovich, whom he called a kid and obviously not a spy. Putin objected the characterization of Gerskovich, reiterating the Kremlin's claim He was caught red-handed with confidential information. But the president did say that the Russian and American special services were in contact with each other on the case and there was no taboo to settle this issue. Putin then mentioned a person serving a sentence in an allied country of the US. While he didn't name the person, Putin was clearly referring to Vadim 
Krasikov, a FSB agent serving a life sentence in Germany for assassinating former Chechen insurgent and Georgian national, is a signal that Kremlin is seeking Krasikov's release from Germany in exchange for freeing Gerskovich. The other point was that US channel of communication remains open. Putin claimed that he doesn't recall when he last spoke to President Biden. And when asked why he hadn't spoken to US counterpart, Putin said, why would I call him? What should I talk to him about? Or beg him for what? He added that certain contacts are being maintained when it comes to the lines of communication between Washington and Moscow. And lastly, Putin blames US and most specifically CIA for the Nord Stream blast. Who blew up Nord Stream? Carlton asked Putin. Referring to the mysterious blast in September 2022 that ripped apart the Russia to Germany undersea gas pipeline. You, for sure, Putin answered. Carlton said, I was busy that day. Putin seemed to enjoy that cosplay, telling Carlton that he might personally have an alibi, but the CIA did not. Taking a dig at the CIA. And when Carlton asked Putin that if he had any evidence of the claim that CIA was involved, Putin said it came down to the question of who had the motive and the resources. Several countries have been publicly blamed for explosion with varying degrees of evidences. Ukraine has said that Russia was responsible, which Kremlin has denied, while Moscow has previously blamed the UK without presenting any evidence to support that assertion either. And there you have it. Although some of these commentaries might be highly opinionated and also boils down to the translation and perception, I have tried to condense this using various articles, but it is important to do your own homework before coming to any conclusion.